Well, for as quiet of a week as last week was, this week is full of killing and battles. Hello and welcome to Civil War in Hindsight. I'm Lieutenant Tommy. With me as always is Prospector Johnny. And Prospector, I'm continuing to drink the whiskey this week because... Uh, ah, another slow it, one then. It went from quiet to holy shit, the world's on fire again. So, buckle up. Okay, so we had one week off is what you're We had one week off. Little, We're now back. A little bit of a break in the fall. We don't even get that much of a break because the week's going to begin on October 3rd with the Battle of Corinth. So, is this, is this, is this, are we an, good? Doing no, it's a good one. It's a good one. No, we're good. No, we're, yeah, no, we're, we're good. It's not on? that bad. It's not, it's not anti okay. level bad. We don't have to worry about okay. that, but it's, but it's, but it's, it's, it's bad. bad. It's bad. Well, not for us. Maybe for the dirty, dirty rebels, but not for us. Oh, it's, it's, it's a we union win. week. Okay, it's a right. union week, Johnny. <laughs> we got a union week. Oh, so shit. In, it's been a while. It's, it's been a while. Been. In mid morning, oh. Confederates underneath Van Dorn and Sterling Price are going to combine their forces and they're going to assault positions around Corinth. Remember that city that they abandoned a while back and that we yeah. took because Halleck was too stupid to realize they were retreating, could have taken that whole army and ended the war in the West, but he didn't because yeah. you know what? Uh, Tommy, you know what? Hey, we're living. Uh, we're not living in the past, Tommy. We're in the middle of a war. We got to go one day at a time. One day at a time. Grind we're there. Stone, That's where we're at. Forward. We're Let's doing do it. This. They were there. So they're going to drive into Rosecrans federal units and uh, push them hard. Uh, and after some pretty severe fighting, the Union are going to pull back to their strong defensive line of redoubts, which are those those forts and then forts oh, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. forts, the little makeshift forts. Yeah, they're going to they're going to yeah, pull back little, to the defensive yeah. line and they're going to hold tight there. Uh, General Grant, who's the overall commander of the forces in this area, is unaware of where the Confederates. He like he knows that that Van Dorn's out there. He knows that Sterling Price is out there. He does. He's assuming that they're going to join up and try to attack I mean, a Union position, but I he know doesn't know Lee's where. Out there, like what? Well, That's know, in somewhere. the east. We're in the west. He's in the east. We're in the west. No, sure. But yeah. he's somewhere. I know he's, he's out there. Yeah. So that doesn't uh, give me any valuable information. Like him knowing Lee is out there somewhere is as valuable as knowing whoever you said was. Out now there remember somewhere. we had uh, was it uh, was it two weeks ago we had the the issue down where they tried to like we're the rebels and we're gonna stop Grant from linking up with Buell and they fought us down in wherever it was. Yeah, it was a yeah, week and we, or two ago. It, I and, we won, and we won and we won that battle. Well, Grant's gonna go. All right. Well, it's clear. That Sterling Price and uh, and was it Sterling Price? Doesn't matter. That Price and uh, and, <laughs> and Van Dorn are linking up and attacking <laughs> Corinth. Uh, they're attacking Corinth. So Grant's like, send my troops to Corinth. So he starts sending reinforcements towards Corinth. But of course, it's 1861 and we have to walk on foot. So it's going to take yeah. more than a minute to get there. Yeah. So that's where how we are. How right far are, do we know? About how far? It it's like a is. good. It's, it's a, a good day's, day's march. Away. General Grant's main force is a good day's march away from Corinth at this point. Now, okay. anyways, Van Dorn's hope here is that a victory at Corinth could push Union forces out of Tennessee and back into Kentucky. So retake. He's trying to retake Tennessee, basically, and uh, okay. and out in the in the Atlantic Ocean. You know, the big blue thing that's out there. Uh, the yeah, Confederates yeah, yeah, the, basically uh, the real enemies, the original OG enemies are across. OG that. enemy, yeah. So basically, the last, uh, last major warship of the Confederacy uh, out there in the Atlantic Wait, that they bought. I, remember, they yeah, bought from the British that, a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yeah, took yeah, control. Yeah, of, that, yeah it's out in the Atlantic. It's now <laughs> taken several U.S. <laughs> merchant ships. What? And now the the merchants in New York are like, hey, they happy. keep taking our shit. Can we please they do something about that? <laughs> they're all so mad the, about uh, it. So now okay. there is a new there is a new call to hunt down the CSS Alabama from Yankee <laughs> one merchants ship. for one ship. And we'll see Did, if that happens oh, later. Oh, Tommy, I really hope it's all just a group of merchants. That team like up merchant and marines, go yeah. take it down. They're just like, nope, screw nope, it. We're gonna we're gonna nope, put like just cannons on our boat. Yeah. yeah, no, just just dudes with knives and and maybe a gun. Ba <laughs> just maybe going we'll, and, uh, we'll, we'll, and taking over this Confederate it, warship. It, spoiler, it doesn't happen this week, but we'll see if it happens <sighs> later. All on. right, let, well, maybe maybe next week. 
Uh, now, on the 4th of October, their fighting is going to conclude in Corinth. Uh, Van Dorn is once again going to assault Union positions near Corinth with Rosecrans counter-assaulting. So this is very similar to Antietam where it's like, bah, bah, right. bah, bah, ping-ponging going on. But we're not doing the 90 yards away, shoot him in the face thing not, for not, four hours. Yeah, not quite so bad as that. Okay. And the bloodiest of the fighting... something. Uh, the bloodiest of the fighting during this battle is going to happen at the Battery Robinette, which is like that readout. And this is pretty much just killing for killing's sake because neither force is able to destroy the other. And Van Dorn is going to have to withdraw his forces in the early afternoon. And Rosecrans is successful. So it's a Union victory, but it's like, yay, we defended our territory, so who gives a shit? You know? Yeah, Tommy, you know what? I think that's my least favorite thing about this war. Maybe it's true in all the wars, but it seems like there's been an exceptional a lot of killing for killing. Amount of just people dying to die yeah. and just nothing happening. And speaking of dying, Johnny, the Union is going to lose 355 killed, 1,841 wounded, and 324 missing out of 23,000 men to Confederate losses of 473. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I'm sorry. Out of how many men? Uh, 23,000. 23, yeah. We lost uh, 10%, 10, 10 to 15%. Give or okay. take, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it'll be about 10%. A little over 10%. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, Confederates are going to lose 473 killed, 1,997 wounded, and 1,763 missing or captured out of 22,000 men. So this is really pretty much an even number of forces fighting each other with an even number of casualties well, on both sides. So It's good that the uh, expenses of each post office to send litters home to those who have <laughs> died will be about the same. About the same. Although Confederates have way more missing or captured because, you know, well, you know, they got captured. Because uh, they captured, yeah. Or they right. said, or they said, you know what? Miss, we're just going to go home. We're already hey. in Mississippi. We're already in the South. Yeah. We're going to yeah. go home. Y'all, I'm bouncing. I know, yeah, I know I have an aunt about 10 miles down that road. I'm going to go find her. Uh, now, it is technically a victory, but it does tie up Grant from really bringing his troops north to Kentucky, where, uh, mm -hmm. where it, he would aid Buell. So, I guess... Sort of the Confederates so per, come out like they they do. Perhaps it was a strategic loss, is what you're suggesting. I mean, Even no, if not, not intentional. I mean, not but really. It ended up being. It prevents Grant from reinforcing uh, Buell, but what we're going to find out later in the week that doesn't really matter. So, mm, it's a victory. So, you know, I'm going with Union victory. All right, all right. take them uh, where we can get them. Yeah, it seems like you're just putting a whole lot of caveats on this one and don't feel <laughs> great about it. But hey, you know what? You know, we'll take what we can get. That's fine, I guess. Take what we can get. Now, well, during... except we actually don't take anything that we can get. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah, we don't do that. That's why it's still going on. Uh, during the evening, Grant's reinforcements are going to arrive in Corinth while out in Kentucky at the state capitol. Richard Hawes is going to be declared the interim Confederate governor of the state. At a party attended by Bragg, Wait, which Kentucky. I think Bragg forgets he's supposed to try to take over Kentucky and hasn't really taken over Kentucky. And yeah, they didn't secede. They didn't secede, and so now you're... And they've not yet been So taken, that whole, right? like, traitor President Davis where, like, we're not conquesting, he kind of just shit all over that Tried, with this Tommy, right here. Forgive me, I don't know the meaning of a lot of words, but conquesting... Uh, means to do what? Take exactly. something that's not yours as yours, which is uh, what he just basically did here what, with Kentucky. That's the thing. That's the, yeah, he, that's he's the doing that. thing. He's he doing that. He's doing that thing. Now, thing. on the 5th, Rosecrans attempts to pursue Van Dorn are going to be a futile. Um, but good news here, Johnny, because surprisingly good news is that Union forces underneath EOC Ord uh, from Tennessee are going to actually intercept Ooh. Van Dorn. The EOC or EOC? Like this, he's this got is, three first initials. He's got a lot of things going on here. Anyway, uh, he's gonna he's gonna intercept Van Dorn and engage in a very brief but very heavy fighting at Hatchie River in Tennessee, but not actually force Van Dorn to surrender. So <laughs> it's a victory, but it's not a victory. It's again, it's this, it's this. It doesn't really. Hey, Tommy, you know the thing that you've said most during this little uh, Civil War recap uh, information yeah, uh, news we, we got yeah, is... Uh, people die is, for, for but no reason. But not 
<laughs> but uh, not, yeah, there's not a lot of but not. So, I'm just going to rename the series, but, but not, not do anything. But not. He, yeah, he, yeah, we, we, did, we fought but, this battle for hey, three days, but. To be fair, this isn't a but not it. we didn't pursue like we did. We did, we did, but we didn't do it successfully. But we did. But not successfully. It's better than McClellan's doing out east where he's still uh, like that's for sitting damn sure. on his Man, Literally, thumb. literally anything would be better than doing what McClellan's doing. <laughs> that is. Short of, uh, no, sorry. Short of surrendering to the Confederates, anything he's doing. is a little bit better. You could do better than that. Yep. Uh, so Van Dorn, over the night of the 5th, is going to be able to slip his battered, battered forces away during the night. Now, on October 6th, Lincoln is uh, beyond frustrated with McClellan for not moving and has Halleck send the following message to McClellan. And I quote here, the president directs that you cross the Potomac and give the f- battle to the enemy or drive him south. Your army must now move while the roads are good. What McClellan say? Not going to do that. <laughs> it I mean, does not on, significantly move his troops. God damn it. <laughs> and this is when Lincoln responds by Keep firing right. him. Lincoln has been to McClellan's headquarters. Lincoln has met with... Mc... They shook hands. They said, let me get Hopefully a count of your like army. That. Oh, your forces are actually 1,000 men stronger than what they were before the Battle of Antietam? Why aren't you doing anything? <laughs> They've met. They've talked. They've had a conversation. Lincoln has now gone back. And, uh, and now he's like, you're still not moving? I thought I thought I made it clear. Move! And now he has Halleck, who's, you know, McConnell's, I mean, you know, granted, Lincoln, president, commander-in-chief, but, like, I mean, he's yep. president. But now no, you have no, the no, actual, I his judgment like, in this. military directing command saying, move your fucking ass, and yep. McClellan goes, nah. Yeah. Now... While I fully support the president's decision to uh, ignore and perhaps encourage such uh, obvious and, and, and blatant um, uh, refusal to follow orders, um, I think perhaps uh, the president might be uh, more interested in not doing things like that in the future, if that's okay to stay still. Can I do that without getting maybe I don't know. quartered and hanged? I don't know, baby. You're crossing the line here. Anyways, I'm getting it, close to it. I'm you're getting close. There's, there's, there's a line Tommy, that you're getting close to. Do not. You're getting uh, close to the line. You're getting close me. to the line. Now in Kentucky, Buell is going to pursue Bragg towards Harrisburg, uh, and on the seventh, Buell has moved his forces into Perryville, Kentucky, where Bragg has some of his forces split between Frankfort and Perryville. It appears that Bragg and Buell are finally going to have their showdown for who gets to own Kentucky. And Johnny, that question who get, who is going to be gets answered. It, who's going to be answered on the eighth when we have the Battle of Perryville, Kentucky? Wait, how do we know? Did we set this up ahead of time? No, uh, what, what do you mean did we set it up? Oh, that's happened already. Sorry, I, I thought you were jumping into the future. No, we, we, we're we having it. We're having it now. It's happening. Okay. Now. It's going it's on. Jesus. Yes. Yes, it's going on. So, and the showdown, we have it. It's going on. And uh, and it will be the largest battles to take place no. in Kentucky. Okay. Uh, right along the Champlain Hills and the Doctor's Creek. Uh, this is an odd back and forth battle where portions of the day, it seems like it could go either way. We have a special coming in a few weeks. Bear with us. Johnny has moved. Hence yeah, it's a lot set, going on. Set Don't, change. I mean, and I'm drinking medicinal whiskey because I lost I'm my all, chalk. I'm all jacked up on my back. He's got no chalk. It's we'll it, figure it out, guys. We're, we're, anyway, we're, we're uh, now special coming now. Uh, but the what str- part? I'm sorry. This is par- I obviously you said where it was, but is this southern, eastern, northern? Is it that- is pretty much in the. It's in the heart. Where? It's in the center of Kentucky. Pretty much right as close. Yes. All right. To the center as you can get. So this is like, if, it, if okay. we're going to have a battle for Kentucky, you might as well yeah, have a battle. I, I, I guess like, might as well be in the center and not on one of the, you know, north or south. No, north well, considering, because like, remember they tried to, like, get up to the Ohio River and they and didn't they, do very well at that. So, like, they, well, you know, the heart God, of it. because I moved to Indiana to, to, and I don't want them anywhere near. Yeah, you moved uh, to southern southern South Indiana, Johnny. You're, you're pretty you're getting pretty close to that river yourself, there, there Johnny. A little too close for my comfort. You're like so a day's walk from this? the yeah. You're like a day's walk from that river. 
So you're getting kind of close there. Anyways, like uh, this battle's going on back and forth. Could go either way at this point. The strong Confederate attack by Bragg is going to be blunted by a relatively new federal commander named Philip H. Sheridan. Uh, and oddly enough, Johnny, Sheridan, okay. new guy, he's going to come. I, I have a feeling he might come to play later on in our series here. Uh, and no, oddly because enough, uh, Lincoln doesn't fire people even when they screw everything up. And so he's no, he's actually he's, he's, Sheridan actually does. not Or no, Sheridan does like Sheridan. Oh, he like, does a thing. He's okay. kind of the union right. hero here. What's he um, and doing? oddly enough here, Johnny, uh, uh, Buell is going to miss an opportunity to really destroy Bragg because, well, he doesn't hear the battle. I'm sorry. So, um, Perryville is an odd area of geography with lots of hills and woods and trees and that kind of stuff. But there's also an odd sure. atmospheric pressure that's going on during the day where if you're not in the valleys where these hills are, where the battle's going on, you're not really hearing that the battle's going on. So just even though he's close the to the battlefield, just beyond, you know, just behind the, the battle line, he doesn't hear that it's going on. Because, so now, he when, doesn't know that Braxton Bragg is right there and he could destroy the entire army if he commits his entire force. So he's not going to commit his entire force because he doesn't know that the battle is that big. Now, the flip side of this coin is that Bragg also doesn't know that the battle is that big and his forces that are over in Frankfurt don't know that the battle is that big and don't come to help. So... Sure. It's just a really odd, like, but that's cannons so... are loud as fuck, but they can't hear them. Yeah, and so it's it's just a sound well, mm -hmm. it sounds like, and, and nothing gets out the top of it. Basically, yeah, so, like, neither that's commander bizarre. is really able to fully commit their forces. It's just that, odd. It's I just, can't, it's, it's a I very can't, odd that battle. That blows me away. That I can't fathom. Being the that only close to a battle and not hearing the gunfire. The only fire suggestion and, that I have is maybe lead closer to the front. I mean, but, you, know, you know, I don't. I'm also in, in also, Indiana, is, so what do I have to first, say? And this is the first time anything like this has ever been an issue or happened. Or uh, shortly, they didn't know that it was a. A thing? Soundproof <laughs> it's a thing. cannon or whatever it's, it's, the hell it's a, it is. It's like, a soundproof that's... canyon. Yeah, it's a soundproof something. <laughs> it's weird. Um, uh, but, but you know, like I said, good news here. The, Bragg also doesn't hear it, so the battle is pretty much contained to the forces that are there. At the end of the day, Buell is able to push Bragg's forces off the field with Bragg retreating towards the southwest. Union victory. Confederates are now going to leave uh, Kentucky. So now the uh, the invasion of the North is completely I mean, over. Uh, you know, the Confederates have God. lost out with Lee in, in Antietam. They're now out of Maryland. And now, yeah. by the end of this week, it looks like Confederate forces are going to be out of Kentucky as That's well. That's the best news you could have delivered to me, Tom. It's about as good as I can get. Uh, Union are going to lose four, 845 killed, 2,851 wounded, and 515 missing out of the 37,000 men. Not yeah, I mean this isn't Antietam, but it's not exactly That's a not, uh, I mean, not well, Antietam so battle. Even the not Antietam, not record breaking battles, whatever. It seems like we're on eight hundred forty five guys dead is not great. Trend of lots more people dying. Yeah, Confederates are going to lose five hundred nineteen killed, two thousand six hundred thirty five wounded, and two hundred fifty one missing, Jeez. which is nearly twenty five percent of their sixteen thousand men. So not great. For Not them, anybody. either <laughs> anybody <laughs> that is God, don't, don't over a thousand there. killed, don't, don't over five thousand wounded, <laughs> and almost a thousand missing. So, not great, Johnny. This, people, this actual this, folks, this used long, to exist, yeah, the day before, yeah, no longer do, yeah, this uh, because this, why. Uh, <sighs> This, no, this don't explain it to me here. Obviously, I know why. Battlefield it's, it's week. It's a rhetorical question. This long battlefield week is going to come to an end on the 9th with the end of the Confederate invasion into north as Bragg is going to pretty much pull his forces out. I'm of sorry, Kentucky. they're coming back up? No, they're, it's ending. They're they're leaving. They're Oh, they're out. Okay, sorry. It ends the the, their invasion into the north. This, I misheard this, because yes. I was just So their greatest about. chance of victory up to this point has now been dashed. They have lost their invasions of both Kentucky and Maryland. 
Uh, we're now back to closer to what we were at the spring and early summer of 1862, where yeah. the North was doing lots of greatness. We can now get back towards that track as of now. And, um, and also, they don't have they have one boat for their navy. No other country pretty much. has recognized them pretty much. as a legitimate country. Yes. Uh, I, what are you? What you're? What are you doing? Uh, but with that uh, said, southern, southern trader states. With that said, the North. Tell me what you're doing. The North does fail to capture the Army of Northern Virginia and Maryland, where they had the perfect opportunity to do so. The North does fail to uh, to capture Bragg's forces here at Perryville, which they did have the opportunity to. If yeah. audio wasn't the problem, and time, uh, time, and time, 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 real quick. I we don't have time to go through all of the things the Union Rosecrans could fails have to capture done, the but, troops. Did in Corinth, <laughs> uh, on account of every so, single week we've been doing this, there have been a list of four or five, five things those, yeah. that the union should have done, but it, but didn't. So final final note here, Johnny. That I got final final note uh, that while all this is going on, Jeb Stewart is going to aggravate the federal forces by crossing the Potomac and destroying some federal stores and warehouses near Chambersburg because McClellan is what? that much of a fuckwit that he's not moving his forces that he allows a Confederate cavalry to come around behind and just. Um, granted, just they're not that big of a sweat. They're just being they're they're being a pain in the ass. So we'll see how that. Sure. Hey, Tommy. Tommy, just tell the business owners that just had their their businesses Warehouses burned? smashed yeah. and burned down that, oh, they're just being a pest. Not a big deal. Your whole livelihood is just ruined. Well, we'll see how Jeb Stewart's raids go next week. That's it for this week in Civil War and Hindsight. If you enjoy Civil War Hindsight, check out Historic Hindsight. We talk about all kinds of fun things uh, that aren't necessarily Civil War related, like how James Madison really blundered the whole War of 1812 thing, and how, you know, like, uh, in World War II, we had so much extra shit that we were able to build ice cream boats. 